would uh, soft ground in Cheltenham have taken a little bit more out of them than you might have liked? So we're sitting here talking to you about Vanillier and you've got an even better one. You clearly got a right class journey. Well. Hello. Hello. <laughs> here we are. I mean, yep. just before the greatest super chase in the world, I think. The scene of the crime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, you ready? Let's go. How would you rate your horse's Grand National preparation out of 10? Ah. Uh, don't go too strong on it. Eight or nine. Um, yeah. It's been, been pretty good. A few of the runs I would have liked to have been a bit better. Bobby Joe was a good run, but it was well beaten by Ian, Ian Maximus, who was going to meet a little bit wrong with in the national. So. Yeah, but then your horse loves the national fences. That's it, and I'm hoping that Ian Maximus won't. Yeah. <laughs> He's a bit... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's his own way of doing things. He's clearly a huge engine, you know, and he is a good horse, but uh, hopefully the fences might, the track's going the wrong direction for him and might inconvenience him a bit. Well, I would rate our preparation probably about the same as you, eight and a half, nine. If it had just been good to soft ground at Cheltenham, it would have been better for Correct Rambler. I just think he's better on the slightly better ground. But having said that, he might be about to run the entry national on soft ground so um, but I'm happy with them I'm happy with them I think uh, we just it's just it's just a matter of keeping them safe isn't it would the uh, soft ground in Cheltenham have taken a little bit more out of them than you might have liked yeah I mean I guess it was harder work for him but we knew that he needed the run like we did we did run in there to give him a hard piece of work yeah um, and I think the crux is when he came back ski rode him and said he just felt better yeah um I ran Vanillier and the Bobby Joe, it's what we did last year, thought it was the right preparation and in a way I'm thinking that I might have, maybe I should have ran him again since that. Um, he has been to a schooling race which we have the... Yeah, you're really lucky with this. The luxury of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah so he, he, went, he went in a school and bumper and um, that was good. So but if he goes in a school and bumper, does everyone know it's Vanillier? Does everyone well, stand kinda, back? It kind of sticks out a little bit, alright. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and what do you say to the jockeys? Give them a hard rate? I mean, do you, do you uh, run listen, it like a race? Yeah, uh, listen, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be getting a slap now. Um, but you use it, yeah. It's, and where uh, was that? Um, it's actually up in Draper State. They run races every few weeks. Oh yeah. Um, over two miles, which is too short for him. And it went well. Um, he was ridden prominent. A few of them quick and past him, but then he was staying on again in the finish. But that's just because it's only two, mi two miles, you know. Um, and how long ago was that? Two weeks. So was that the week before Cheltenham? <clears throat> or the week of just Cheltenham? Just after. Just, the week after Cheltenham? Just after Cheltenham, I think, yeah. Yeah. So it has to be the right sort of preparation, doesn't it? You've got to do something hard with them. That's oh, definitely, of, yeah. a, a month you before. Be, you can't be wrapping, wrapping them up in cotton wool. Yeah. Well, you do to a point, well, but they have to do what? You just, yeah. yeah. I know. I always think with the, uh, with the national, it's funny, you, you get national fever and you think you should do something different. You shouldn't. It's just another race. Absolutely, yeah. Just, just yeah. do as you always want to yeah. do. Yeah, and it's yeah. the same with Chatham. You have to Yeah. just take it as that's it. prepare yeah. them as best you just like you would for every other race, really. Yeah, right. Let's see My what God. other... Yeah. We should have read these before they... <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the ideal ground for your horse? Oh, definitely correct. In my mind, we'd like good to soft. Good to soft, soft. So I don't think we're going to get that. Having said that, Scoo's out walking the track just now, and you said it's not as, it's not as deep as it was at, at, at Cheltenham and stuff. It just depends what the ground does, doesn't it? What about yours? That's good news to hear from me as well, because I think... Vanillier's best form is definitely on spring ground. Um, I know he's lacking a gear, but he definitely enjoys good soft ground. When does he when does he come through in his race? Like, does he always does he tend to drop out a bit, or does he, do you like him prominent? Um, I don't like to ride him too prominent because um, he just can put him under pressure a little bit. He just if you can just give him a chance early, he'll come home man. Yeah. Uh, so it's just trying to ha find the the happy medium. You yeah. know, you want to stay in the race, yeah. but you just don't want to force them too much. Do you think Karek and Vanilli are going to be going along together, going, well, oh, our trainer's told us to do this. Yeah, well. 
you clearly got it right last year anyway. Yeah, well, I think correct did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right, on to the next one. How much impact will last year's Grand National have on this year's race? Listen, I suppose it, it certainly boosts confidence that we know he handles the track and the jumps and the occasion, and which is a big thing, um, being able to handle the occasion. Yeah, it's almost like conditioning them, isn't it? So once they've got used to that and can yeah. cope with it, yeah. it's not going to be a fright for them. Yeah, and if they don't handle it once, they probably won't handle it the next time. It's more than likely going to get worse. Yeah. And, um, Do you think Aintree brings out the best in Vanillier? Yeah, he took to the fences really well. Um, he does enjoy it. Yeah, I think with Corrett, he loves that whole sort of... Uh, in fact, he's got worse since he won the National. He likes the whole media thing. He likes a bit of a camera and, a, yeah. and whatever. But uh, as long as he keeps his mind on the job this, this year. But, um, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think knowing that you've had a bit of experience around here and the whole day of it, I think, I think because our horses finished at the front, I think they didn't have as hard a race as some of the ones that are at the back. They, they didn't cope with it as much. So maybe when they come back, they'll have enjoyed it and think that it's... It's yeah, I, I can't say that. I, I would say he definitely did enjoy it. I would have every confidence that he's going to come back here and, and show up again anyway. Yeah, the entry factor. Yeah. <laughs> Which horse has been treated most fairly by the handicapper? Yours. <laughs> <laughs> so Carrick managed it. He got a pound off your horse last year. And I think he's now, is he carrying eight pounds more than him this year? So um, the handicapper says, you've done a much better job, can nine I just pound, say? Nine pound swing. Yeah. Uh, but sure, listen, you were idling, them. You were idling in front. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I wasn't all... good enough to get to you. Oh, no. Or Vanillier wasn't good enough to get to you. Did you go um, up after the Bobby Jew? No, the weights are out. The weights were out? Yeah. You're so clever. So that's why it's, yeah. it's, an, it's a nice prep run. And are you due to go up? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. I don't think so. Because yeah. um, we are due to go up three pounds. Okay, for well, the, yeah, for the Gold Cup, yeah. But that's so still your six pound swing. So. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, how much difference does it make over four miles? I don't know, a pound here and a pound there? <sighs> yeah. Um, I'd still rather have it than not. Uh, yeah. I know. Um, I know. You know, I remember my mind goes back to do you remember Sunny Bay off top weight? And he just, it was too much for him. It was 12 stone, he had 12 yeah. stone and heavy ground. And he just yeah. couldn't cope. Corrick's getting close to that. It does make a difference. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a few, few young guns coming in there with not much more than 10 stone. I know, it's not just about uh, us, It's not is just it? about us two, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, on to the next one. What's your horse's biggest strength? Uh, a combination of, I suppose, the two big factors you need is he jumps and he stays. The Grand National's made for horses that have just got such bravery and but can keep galloping, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. 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 I mean, I'd say Correct's strength is his intelligence. Like, he can, he worked out last year how to jump the fences and and it didn't faze him that there were lots of horses in the race and that there were a few protesters around the place. He just, uh, yeah. his intelligence was to enjoy his racing. So, yeah. I think that's good. I suppose Vanillier is, is similar like that, you know, he's so laid back. Um, and horses that r race lazily generally finish well. Yeah. You know, if you over race in a race of this distance, um, yeah. you know, there's a chance you're not going to stay. It's not for an overexcitable type, is it? No, it's got to be sure. the horse that, and the bravery that they have. I mean, they have yeah. to be so brave to, to just keep coming to those big fences and, and enjoy them. And horses falling beside them and mm. all around them and dodging horses on the ground. And, yeah. yeah, it's quite a big marathon, isn't yeah. it? I suppose that's what makes it the greatest race. Uh, what's your horse's biggest weakness? Kind of. I don't know. Does he have any weaknesses? Maybe looking at the camera. I'm going to have to tell him that as he comes up the home straight, and he did it this year as well. That he gets to the uh, gets the elbow and puts his head in the air. Always gives you a fright. But uh, that's kind of what he does. And actually, it's funny. You can see him. Um, he's always done it in his races, and the, and the commentators sometimes say, you know, what's he doing? But we sometimes think he's just looking into the crowd to see if there's anyone watching him. But uh, it certainly gets my anxiety going. I'm sure it does. So, uh, yeah, probably just in the home street, just looking about himself a bit. I don't know, can I pin any great weakness? Um, I suppose what I did say there about just lacking the gear to keep himself in the race, but then the positive side to that is you, you generally stay well, but you just don't want to get too far back. Yeah. 
Um, it's a, bit a horrible question. I don't know who posed these is. questions to say what's their weakness. They don't, I don't think yeah. any of them have weaknesses. Could your horse have won the Grand National 20 years ago? 2004. Doesn't uh, seem that long ago, does it? <laughs> no, um, 20 years ago. Um, I don't see why not. Yeah, um, it would have been over a little bit further and bigger jumps. And uh, I'd say, if anything, it might have played more to his strengths. I think Carrick would have... I think he would have adapted to the fences because he is quite an intelligent horse. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I don't, you know, they, they go on about the changes to the Grand National. I'm not sure they've changed it that much. I mean, it's still a phenomenal steeplechase. Vanillier's style of jumping, he does jump a little bit flat, which suits the fences now, whether it would have suited as much back then. Yeah. I don't know, you know, where you really had to... Yeah, they had to. You see that. You I had mean, to get maybe, in deep and <laughs> yeah, maybe even further back. You know, I think about when Scoo's dad, Michael Scoodmore, was was riding in it in the late fifties, and they they had to go so slow because most of it was the land was almost. Didn't they have they had a track that was ploughed before the first fence to slow everyone down? Right. <laughs> I mean, that was a great idea. Yeah. But um, anyway, they can't put that back in now. But I think it was a totally different. It was much more like a sort of yeah. traditional point to point, wasn't it? But I think I don't know. Twenty years ago, I think Corrie could have won it then. Yeah. I think would, would win it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the hardest thing about training a horse for the national? I think it's just the pressure. So, because we were talking about this earlier, weren't we? That um, when you're training a horse for a race, you're training a horse for a race, whether it's the national or Cheltenham or Perth or the, the, the zero to 90 at Musselburgh, you're just preparing it for that day. And I think if you come away from that, come away from the routine, that's when you get into trouble. Whereas for the, for the national, we just try and say, it's just another race. Of course, it's a race that's very important to us, but you have to kind of train them the same way. Yeah, I would agree. Throughout the year, you really have to concentrate on the one day and from the handicap point of view as well, you, you don't want to go up. So um, you have to plot your course and yeah, from that, you know, from that side of it, you, yeah. you, you, it's, it's all about the spring. You can't over-race them beforehand, can you? No. You can't just keep running and keep running and hope that you get there on the right mark. It's really... You have to plan it a bit. Yeah, it's, um, I suppose you really concentrate on after Christmas as well, to have them peaking. Yeah. You know, now. Yeah. It's good though. I quite enjoy it. I quite enjoy that challenge of producing them just for the one day. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in a way, it's all the pressure for one day, but... At least you're, you know your target. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. What a target, eh? Right. Who is the biggest threat, excluding Carac and Vanillier? You would have to consider I am Maximus on his performance in the Bobby Joe. I have to say, I do like my own mare, Limerick Lace. Um, ah. I think she'll take to it. So we're sitting here talking to you about Vanillier, <laughs> and you've got an even better one. It's only a threat. It's only a threat. <laughs> no, it's only, it's only a threat. That's really interesting. But, uh, I think she's, and why I think did she's you? This is her first time around Aintree, is it? Yeah, yeah. And why did you decide that she should be an Aintree horse? And she's a filly. Yeah, listen, she jumps really well. She's a big Scopey mare, and she was second in the Troy Town Handicap Chase in Navan back in November. I think she'll stay well. Um, she goes in soft ground, which it's looking like it's going to be, and. Um, Poor Vanillier, as his little stable companion comes pop well, to pop. Come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, listen, she is a threat, I think, yeah. Isn't it brilliant when you suddenly, when you get that feeling of, oh, I know, this could be an entry horse. It's, sudden, it's such a kick, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I think I am Maximus as well. I think he's, a, he's an improving type. Of course he's going to have his flaws, but, and he hasn't been around the track and everything. But, uh, and then the other one at a big price, just because he's owned by friends of mine, is Rye Madge, who uh, was, was right there coming to the last, last year and just didn't quite stay on. I know that they've looked after him and they've really aimed him for this race. But look, I just hope one of us wins it, eh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> last but not least, who's going to win the 2024 Grand National? Well, if it's not us, I hope it's you. That's, uh, I don't know, I think, uh, I'd love Carrick to win it. I'd love Vanillier to win it. I'd love Limerick Lace to win it. Uh, 
it's a phenomenal race, the way that it reaches so many people, and people that wouldn't normally be involved in horse racing, people that just do it for, you know, look at that one race a year. So I think it does, it is quite historical, it does give you, gives you quite a kick, gives you quite, I think you, it gives you confidence, definitely gives you confidence, but crikey, I mean, to win it again, I think I'd be, I mean, I cry enough anyway. No, you'd be, you'd, you'd, <laughs> you'd get, you're getting bored, you get bored of it. <laughs> well, I will never, ever, ever get bored of it, I'll just be crying even more than usual, but um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it would be a phenomenal thing to do. Yeah, I just, it's, it, it's something that I would say everyone should try and win a national one time because yeah. it's just a great but, feeling. You know, it is, it's so difficult and what you've achieved is unbelievable to win it twice. And there's been so many great trainers over the years that never won it, you yeah. know. And, um, yeah, but it's just because I train slow horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know yeah. what, what, what way you'd like to put it, but um, it's a huge achievement. Yeah. yeah. I think Vanillier could win it, will he win it? I don't know. But, um, He's going there with a good chance, and I hope he does. And if, if he doesn't, I hope Carrick Rambler does. Excellent. We'll see you there in the winner's enclosure. Thank you.